Hello again, it's Alan. Today I wanted to tell you guys about my experience attending Camp Lost Boys. <laughs> Here's my shirt. Um, it was an amazing, amazing, life-changing experience. And I just want to tell you a little about what it is for those of you who don't know about it and to tell about my experience. Um, so Camp Lost Boys is a summer camp experience for trans men. Um, it's specific to trans men rather than like all trans people or non-binary people um, just because as I experienced at the camp, it is so valuable and so rare to have this space for such an extended period of time, like three days, uh, where you're just in a space with people who share your specific identity, or at least gender identity, and um, where you can take up space, so to speak, um, and, and have people know and understand and most importantly, be able to really relate so closely to your life experience, um, your mental experience, your social experience, and your body experience. It was just amazing. I had never experienced being in that space for more than a couple hours or something like it's a support group. So anyway, yeah, so it's for trans men and it uh, is created and run by a nonprofit organization created by trans men called the Intentional Man Project. And so they run Camp Lost Boys, which is, uh, it's like events. It's not like a camp, like they don't have their own camp property. They kind of rent out different um, like traditional summer camp facilities in different areas of the U.S. Um, it'll, it's like a long weekend thing. Each one is like three nights. Yeah. Um, so this past year in 2024, they had them in, let's see, there was one in Pennsylvania. The one that I went to was in Oregon. I'm not sure where the others were. Um, so yeah, so the idea, I think, is to give trans men the chance to have like a summer camp experience as our true selves, as opposed to if some of us went to summer camp as children or something, we might not have really been able to be our true selves or might not have been in touch with our true selves. Um, and it's just for adults ages 18 and up. And so, um, at least at the camp that I was at, you stay in cabins and like bunk beds, that kind of thing. And, um, there were like around 160 guys at the camp that I went to. That's so amazing. And so during the day, there's different activities you can do like traditional summer camp activities like archery, uh, making friendship bracelets, making tie-dye shirts. Um, there were a couple of guided hikes, stuff like that. And at the particular camp location that I went to, it was a beautiful, gorgeous, lush Pacific Northwest forest with like moss all over the giant trees and stuff. It felt magical. And there was a beautiful wild river. There aren't really any rivers where I live because it's dry. So that was so special to get to hang out with some other guys by this beautiful river. And um, during the days, there were also sessions that you could attend, which were like panel, discussions or learning about something or just kind of open discussions about a particular thing like there was a session for guys who are dads or want to become dads 
Um, there's one for gay, bi, or queer guys. Um, there's one about building community. Uh, one about um, like learning how to use a stantipede device properly. And I learned some really helpful things from that, even though I have already tried a few different STPs and learned about it, um, so that was helpful. Uh, and a, a bunch of other stuff too. And there's um, a particular session for men of color and also uh, something I thought was really wonderful was a space, like sort of a lounge cabin for men of color to go to at any time during the camp weekend. Um, so the I think the leaders of the camp are very wise and intentional and compassionate about having space for different groups of guys who need it and just including people, even like trying to include uh, shy guys and stuff like that. Um, anyway, so yeah, so that's kind of what you do. And then a couple evenings there were big campfires, one of which was um, elders speaking and sharing their stories and stuff like of things like transitioning in the 1960s or the 1980s or whatever the case may be and um or just their experience being an older guy and being trans and what has that been like so that was so powerful that kind of thing is so meaningful and important to me and i got even more sense of how that is so important for me like hearing our history like our history our culture stuff like that as trans men um and i just have so much respect for the guys who shared and so much respect for what they went through in their lives when things were more difficult than they are now and it was just powerful to hear about like them being fathers in some cases or grandfathers in some cases um like it i know like for me i had already known like two or two or three kind of older trans guys who had been transitioned for a while but not that many um and I don't know that I'd really talk to them in great depth. Uh, so for me, but especially for other guys, like guys of my age or younger guys who had like never met a trans man older than themselves. Like guys talked about this, this was the case for them. Like they were 20 something and had never met a trans guy older than them. And a couple guys shared at some point that being at camp and seeing guys older than them was so powerful because they could, for the first time, have some vision of themselves aging and being an older guy and it was maybe the first time it had occurred to them that they could maybe end up being a grandfather or something. and. I mean, that's so essential to have some vision of what your future could be like, because as trans men, I mean, clearly we don't like just automatically get that. That's not something that we get like cis people get. Um, we're not surrounded by people like us usually. Um, so it's super important. So. I was personally so thankful that these older guys were there, um, or even guys my age, you know, middle-aged or whatever, but who had tra been, you know, who had transitioned a long time before I did and had, and were sort of elders in that sense. Um,
yeah, it's hard to put it into words, but it's so important. And I didn't quite know that I was missing that to that extent. And I didn't quite know how important it would feel. So it just, all that just makes me feel like I really want to show up, like keep showing up for trans guys who are younger than me or who maybe are older than me, but have just transitioned recently or who maybe are just starting to look at transitioning. Um, and I hope and like encourage older trans men and or guys who had transitioned a long time ago to keep showing up for other guys if you're able to do that and if it feels okay for you because it makes so much difference. It like makes the difference to whether somebody can have a picture in their head of having their own future or not. Um, so that was a, a big, a big thing that's been on my mind. And like with YouTube, this is a tangent, but it seems like most or like a lot of the guys who are making videos on YouTube when I was first pondering transitioning aren't here anymore. And I get that. I, I totally get how that happens. It's like, you're just living your life. You don't really want to be on YouTube anymore, but, um, but if you can do it, if you can make yourself visible, it makes a huge difference for other guys. And on that note, th this kind of ties into one of the most um, impactful things about camp for me, which was that through being surrounded by just all trans men for three days, which I'd never experienced, and, you know, like most people, like cis people, have kind of always been around people who share their gender identity, their, you know, more or less their, like, body experience, or at least it's not really that hard, relatively speaking, to find people who share those things. Uh, but for me, I have never spent more than a couple hours surrounded only by people who share my gender identity and my body experience and my life experience and stuff. Like, never for more than a couple hours. Like, um, and I've met in person and spoken to, what, like 20, 25, maybe trans men. Um, like in my life. Uh, and there were guys at camp that I think I heard from at least one guy, he had never met another trans man. And a bunch had only met a very small number. So it's a radically different experience that you might not have even imagined or thought of. It might not have even occurred to you what that would be like. Um, I know I'm kind of like repeating myself, but it's it's just like such a powerful thing and I want to express it, but it's also like, I feel like it's hard to fully communicate it. But anyway, I'm continuing on. So I had like unexpected um, feelings and like results from this experience. Um, a big one, which is what I've been trying to lead up to is that I felt this natural and spontaneously occurring unforced feeling of positivity about myself and trans men in general and pride to be a trans man and pride in myself and just who I am and how I am. Uh, like I really noticed this towards the end of camp and especially as I left camp and then was back in the regular world and had a point of comparison. But yeah, like 
I mean, of course, I've had some positive feelings about that stuff over time, but but this case, it was just more of like a gut level thing. It just sprang up without conscious thought or prompting. It was a new thing. It was. It felt like an amazing gift. Seriously, yeah. Um, what? Wow. And um, so that came from being in the space and being with all these trans men. And it made me realize I do not think that having this genuine gut level spontaneously occurring like pride and embracing of oneself and being trans, I don't think that can occur, at least for most people, in isolation. Um, I think people who are able to experience that on their own are lucky and I guess, I, I would guess, somewhat rare. You need to be, you need to be around people who are like you. You need to see the, the positive things about them. You need to feel that special and like positive connection between people. Um, you need to see yourself reflected in other people and understood. And you need to feel like people get you and you need to feel that you're not the odd one out or the only one like you or that you're the sort of weird one in a crowd. If you kind of always feel that way, which is more or less my usual experience, how is this these genuine feelings of like positivity and stuff, how's that really gonna happen to that extent? Like, um, and there's that phrase, representation matters, and I get that more now. Um, I, yeah, I probably would have had more of a genuine sense of it earlier on if I wasn't white because you know that there's that whole realm of things and yeah race plays a huge role in all of this experience but um anyway it matters to be with people who are like you it matters to be for it matters for trans men to be with trans men um and another thing related to that is when I got home after camp and, you know, I'd be in the bathroom doing my thing, looking in the mirror. And for a couple days after camp, I kept feeling like, I, I feel happy about how I look. I feel like I look good. Like, do I look different? Because I didn't <laughs> feel that way before going to camp. And I couldn't put my finger on what it was. And I even asked my girlfriend, like, I don't, like, I don't think that I would look different after three days, but do I look different somehow? And she was like, well, not really, no, but you seem more confident, um, more happy or more comfortable. And I mean, that resonated with me because that was true. I did feel more confident and certainly more happy after being in camp. So that was a really trippy thing, like to, to feel like I look different. <laughs> Wow. Just from what I already described, from feeling, you know, being in this community. Um, so, yeah, there's all that. And then um, another thing is just making friends. Uh, like, it took a couple days to kind of accumulate a feeling of, like, being familiar with particular other people at camp, um, but it did happen, and I did get to know some guys that I felt I connected with um, beyond just the trans identity, and I had a lot of really meaningful conversations with a variety of diverse kinds of guys, and 
that was so cool. It felt so good. And it was socially overwhelming for me, for sure. And like camp was generally very exhausting. I didn't sleep that great. Um, like the bunk bed is not the ideal sleeping environment. Um, and I'm not used to having nearly that much social interaction on a daily basis. Um, but it was good. I, I loved it. And it just felt so special to have these in-depth conversations with guys and, um, yeah. And I stayed in touch with some people like I have texted and emailed a little bit and had phone calls and zoom calls with a handful of guys. And that is so special in it. It feels absolutely essential for me and like super meaningful to try to keep that up. I need that community. Um, and there's an online mm, platform for, for like being with the group, staying in touch with the group. So if any of you go to Camp Lost Boys, I can't say how much I recommend making sure to join the online group after camp. Um, let's see, other things. Um, <laughs> one little tidbit was, so before camp, I thought, like, wow, I remember when I was just starting to transition, and I thought that guys who were, like, 10 years on T, like I am now, it was like, whoa, like, I want to meet you and talk to you, like, whoa, it's so cool, and so I thought, oh, I'll maybe f be like that to guys who are just starting out and perhaps that might have been the case but just i was not expecting that there would be so so many guys who were 10 years and way more um since transitioning and that just speaks to the lack of community at least in where I am locally, or like even lack of very many uh, people who transitioned that long ago being visible online. I was like, whoa, there's so many guys who transitioned so long ago, like my age or even a little younger than me, and of course a lot older than me, but I was like, wow. So it's kind of like sad that that was something I wasn't totally expecting, but I'm glad that it was like that. I'm glad those guys were there. Um, anyway, it, yeah, so it was like, no, I am not actually one of the sort of higher up guys, so to speak, in terms of like length of transition or age. Um, what else was I gonna say? Um, oh yeah, so one cool activity was there was a pool party one afternoon. We all got to go in the swimming pool, and it was super powerful to be there just with everybody being a trans man, and almost everybody having top surgery scars of one kind or another, and all different kinds of bodies, shapes and sizes, uh, but, of course, similarities in bodies due to being trans men. And that, it was, like, mind-blowing. I was like, I can't wrap my head around it. That's kind of how the whole weekend felt. Like, this this whole thing is amazing. And it's like my brain can't process it yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, and... It was interesting to note that based on just stuff I've seen online, because that's really the most of where I've seen the most trans guys, at least up until camp, like I thought that most guys had top surgery scars that were not visible hardly at all. Um, but at least at this pool party, it seemed like that was not the case. And there were all different kinds of scars and plenty that were quite visible. Um, so I felt like for me, with my very visible scars, like, oh, I guess I'm not like the only one who didn't get like 
the absolute most ideal surgery results and that maybe the reality is a little different than I thought. So that was kind of comforting. And, well, let's see what else. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was just amazing to be able to just hang out, talk to people or not talk, or just kind of be alone and walk around. And to just be a regular guy in this environment and to not have to worry about explaining yourself or to not worry about what other people think or might perceive about your body or your mannerisms or anything. Um, to just hang out and be a regular guy among these guys and not be self-conscious. That might sound small to some people, but it was just like monumental experience. So, yeah, so anyway, yeah, feel free to ask me questions in the comments if you want, and um, yeah, I hope that was interesting for you to hear about, and thanks for letting me share, and thank you for watching, and um, yeah, I'm definitely going back to camp. Absolutely, I have to. It's essential. So perhaps I'll see some of you there. Oh, and this reminds me <laughs> just of a funny little thing. Uh, so I think at least three people at camp told me that they recognized me from my videos, and that was cool. Like, I feel good about that. It feels really nice to me to meet people like that, that I've already sort of connected with without me knowing it, without me knowing them personally. Um, so that was really cool. And, um, and I feel like there might have been more who just never said anything to me because at the beginning of camp, the leader said, like, you, you might see guys that you know from online or from other work that they've done or books that they've written, because there were guys there who have written books about stuff related to being a trans man, um, some very well known. So the leader was like, you know, you can, men you can say something to somebody like, I appreciate your work, but don't like geek out too much. Just let them have their own camp experience. So since he said that, I wonder if there were more guys who just didn't say anything to me. Um, and you know, I appreciate, appreciate where they were coming from, but also I'm fine with guys coming up to me. Um, so it's really trippy because here I am feeling isolated all the time, most of the time. Um, and yet <laughs> in most trans men spaces that I go to, which are not that many, but it seems like there's almost always at least one person, if not more, who recognize me from my videos, which is crazy. It's like, I'm feeling isolated and yet and, but yet I'm like well known among a portion of the trans men community. <laughs> yeah, wow, interesting. Anyway, okay, I'm gonna bring it to a close. It's another super long video, but that's how I am. If people don't like long videos, I guess they do not need to watch my channel. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I hope you're well. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.